Hey dudes, today's the day. We're putting in the work, we're doing snatches. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to do them right and smooth. You can do this. I'm gonna teach you today how to snatch properly so that you have a nice smooth transition to the top and a smooth transition to the back. Alright, so we're gonna go over four main things that are gonna help. The first one is gonna be your one arm kettlebell deadlift. Alright, so this is gonna help you with anti-rotational. A lot of people snatch or swing and their shoulders rotate a lot, right? So since we're doing heart style kettlebell snatching, you want your shoulders square. Because the whole point of heart style is force met with force and to give as much effort in each rep. Okay, so anti-rotational. Then we're gonna work on hinging, right? We're gonna work on making sure you hinge rather than flop forward. And this way, you're able to activate all of your posterior chain muscles. Your hips, your hamstrings, your lower, middle back, your glutes, everything that is essential to transfer power from your hip to the bell, right? The other thing we're gonna work on also is going to be uh, engaging the lats. Why do you wanna engage your lats? Because your hips, that's where all your power is at, right? So with your lats being dis engaged there's nothing to transfer that power to the belt so by engaging your lats locking these connect them to your glutes all that power is going to be transferred to the belt and then the last thing we're talking about is hand placement hand placement is very important and the reason why it's important because if your hands if the bells not correctly on your hands you can over grip tear a lot of your, your callus, your hands, or you can be grabbing it in a way that's not gonna be as efficient as possible, and you're not gonna be able to engage your lats like you should, which is gonna allow you to transfer the power from your hips to the belt. All right, so first, we're gonna talk about the one arm deadlift. Now why this is important is because by really practicing and mastering the one arm deadlift, you are inadvertently practicing and mastering the foundation of the snatch. When you set yourself up to one arm deadlift correctly, you're setting yourself up to snatch correctly. What I mean is, the bow is gonna be right in front of you. The bow is gonna be offset just slightly to the arm that you're gonna snatch with or the arm that you're gonna deadlift with. You're gonna hinge with your hips back, grab the bell, activate your lats. And notice my hand placement here. I'm not like this because the lats are disengaged. I'm engaging my lats. Now, with my shoulders square, I have now activated both sides of my core. I'm going to breathe in. Right? This exact position is where you need to be with the swing and then the one arm snatch. Alright, so, so now that we've touched on the one arm deadlift, let's look into how that actually translates into the one arm swing. Everything you can think of, all the cues, squaring out your shoulder, hinging, engaging your lat, making sure that you have an A-frame grip on the kettlebell, you're gonna now set yourself up in a kettlebell start position, which looks like this. With the kettlebell in front of you, slightly, to the right, if you're gonna snatch with the right hand. You're gonna then walk your feet out two steps. Hinge. Make sure your knees are always pushed out and your pinky toes 
are digging into the ground. When you grab for the bell, make sure, just like the deadlift, you're squaring your shoulders, right? Activate your lats. I like to put my hand here to remind me I want this elbow down. Then from there, I'm going to hike back. Make sure all the force is transferred to my hips. And I'm going to extend my hips all the way forward by contracting my quads, my glutes, keeping my abs tight, my chest up, breathing in, and out. Now with this arm, you do not want the bow forward. You want to pull the bell back, keeping those lats engaged. So with that foundation, we can then modify that into one drill that's going to actually help you get the bell up with a upward trajectory and then it very smoothly transition into a snatch all right all right so the, so the main drill that we're going to be practicing is called the pistol swing the t-rex swing all right so with the bell in front of me truthfully you want to tame the arc as much as possible and redivert the force of the kettlebell upwards so instead of the kettlebell shooting straight forward you want the kettlebell to shoot up the main goal is to have the kettlebell up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice that we're gonna cut the line of power from going straight and we're going to redivert it up. So once you've got that basic drill, now all we're going to do is direct our attention up. And the way we do it is called running the clock. You have a clock, you have Three o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock, twelve o'clock. So you want to be at three, two, one, twelve. Now starting out with the snatch you're gonna bang your wrist a lot. So I would recommend you wear some kind of pad, something that's soft, and that's gonna help you to continue to practice so that you get better at not banging your wrist. And one of the best uh, drills to keep you from having that fear of the bell way up here banging, right? like this, because that hurts, it's actually the low snatch. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help you psychologically get over the fear of the bell whipping and hitting your wrist. So it looks like snatch, 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 snatch. If you're uncomfortable snatching all the way up, then keep the snatches more horizontal and a little bit diagonal. As you get a little bit better, as you get a little bit more confident, start uh, going more vertical, all right? 
This is how it's gonna look. So the last thing that you're really going to need to hone is the downswing. And that's very important because on the downswing, you have the potential of ripping your hands. You have the potential of overcasting the bell and making the bell pull you forward, causing a lot of back injury, a lot of back pain, and too much force. All right? So you want to tame the arc. You want to be able to pull the bow towards you. And what I like to think of, zip, unzip your jacket. Think of it as having an overall, like you're painting something and you have a zipper that goes all the way down to the crotch. You want to actually unzip that all the way down, all the way past your legs, basically. So. When you're in this position, you're gonna now zip up, zip down. Here's your zipper. And you're pulling the bell towards you, keeping minimal distance, all right? Practice those drills, rewind this tape, ask questions. I am more than happy to answer any questions you have. If I've forgotten anything, I'll make a part two or I'll answer all the questions you need. But as always, thank you for watching. God bless you. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.